everyone, welcome to the channel. I'm Britt, creator of The Style Shaker, a guide to cleaner, greener, better for you beauty, skincare, and beyond. And today I am back with an update for my favorites roundup, which I call Britt's Picks. I have tried hundreds of products and I like to narrow it all down to one quick list of my absolute favorites. No brand or retailer can pay to get on this page. Links to everything that I mentioned will be below. If you like these types of videos and you wanna keep seeing more, please support the channel by hitting the like button, subscribe if you never wanna miss a thing. And I'm gonna dive right into it, here we go. So I had a top 10 the last time, which I will link to below. It will also be on the website if you wanna check it out. They're all there for you. And they're constantly rotating as I just kind of try new things that beat other ones out. This is a dynamic, like always evolving list. I'm gonna keep the 10 on there and I'm gonna expand it by five additional products because they deserve, they deserve it. They're like really good. I do wanna kick it off with something that completely surprised me. This is brand new. This was sent to me by the brand. I was under no obligation to review it. It is the Typology Concealer. And truly, honestly, I'm not sure why because I actually liked their skin tint. I just didn't think I was gonna like a concealer. I'm really tough with concealers. They can be really tricky depending on your skin type and what goes on. So this concealer has really grown on me. Packaging is great except for the fact that if you ding it, it's gonna keep pushing product out. That's the one, that's the one caveat thing I've learned since using like it. it. Here are a couple reasons why I like it. You can see the full review back on the site. It is moisturizing and creamy, but it's incredibly lightweight. It provides a very natural looking amount of coverage that sinks into my skin. So it's moisturizing, but I didn't find it to instantly crease. There was creasing, but a quick dusting of setting powder underneath or on top really helped and it helped it stick around for the length of the day. And it's a really good multitasker. This is sort of like a liquid version of the RMS on cover up. The thing that I've always used for spot treatment or if I have light coverage days, that's what I will reach for and I'll just kind of press it in to even things out, do it in a minimal way. This has become kind of my go-to for that. I really, really like it. It's not the most brightening of the bunch. I have Kosas also on the list for that. But if you like a natural, strong coverage concealer that doesn't quickly settle into fine lines and is easy to work with, you may want to check this out. Plus, I think oilier skin types might actually like it. That's my guess. You let me know. Next up, I'm bringing this back because it fell off the list. Now it has to come back because I keep using it. The RMS Eye Lights. This is in the shade Strobe. These are both very sustainable, by the way. The first two that I'm bringing up, which makes me really happy. This is an incredible cream shadow. It blends out, it builds up really nicely so you can get really strong dramatic pigment and it never creases on me, like it never <laughs> creases on me. And I don't know how and I don't know why. It's not irritating, it doesn't feel tight, it doesn't like pull on the skin at all, it doesn't dry out the lid. It's just really good and surprisingly, the strobe color is one that I really like using. If I put concealer on, I'll, I'll set my eyes, but then I'll put this on top of it. And it works kind of like this weird, slight, subtle, shimmery primer for whatever I want to put on top, like a powder shadow. I, I often find myself doing combos and this is the base shadow for me. So it prevents creasing for not only this, but then anything I put on top of it too. The next one is the Rose Ink Bronzer. This is the cream bronzer. This is not the most sustainable, but again, this one shocked me too. If you've been watching me on Instagram, you've seen multiple MOTDs, Makeup of the Days, featuring this bronzer. Kawaii is the shade that I have. It is the perfect non-warm, AKA not orangey or Oompa Loompa looking. My Fair Skin Color. It's so, so good. It applies really nicely with, this is another thing, the Sigma F15 brush. This brush changed my cream bronzer and blush game. I actually use it with highlighter as well. Completely unexpected as well because these bristles looked like <laughs> kind of sad and I judged it. I judged it before I used it and I shouldn't have done that because I could have been using this all along and it's so, so good with this bronzer. You do not need the rose ink brush unless you wanna get a rose ink brush, that's on you. I'm sure it's great for the bronzer, but yeah. The other reason that I like this bronzer is that it builds nicely, but it looks very natural. If you're a person who likes the added warmth of a bronzer, but you don't want it to look overwhelming or fake, then this one is really hard to mess up. Two more, both of which I am currently wearing on my face right now. Oh, by the way, I'll give you a link to everything I'm wearing on my face. I needed to bring the Air Perez back. It's funny, I this comes and goes in waves in my routine. I don't know why, I don't know why. The Air Perez Oat Milk Foundation. So beautiful. It kind of comes and goes in my routine, but because it's cooler, we just had that cold blast of crazy weather. This has been very moisturizing 
and it gives my dull winter skin, which already started, it gives it a pop. It gives it kind of a bounce. I do use moisturizer underneath, but this I love. In the winter, I actually apply it with just my fingers. I press it into my skin. It takes a little bit longer, but it looks so good. So the coverage here is very strong. Feeling of it is really good. I can't really feel, there's slight moisture to the face, but I don't even know it's there throughout the day. It doesn't settle into fine lines. And by the end of the day, it gives this glow. I don't know, it mixes with the oils. It does something kind of just, it's just beautiful. And if you don't like dewy, then you might not like this. But if you do like a subtle dewy look, this isn't an oily dewy look. It's not super wet or slick. But if you like a subtle dewiness, which yes, again, I like during winter, check it out. It's real good. And finally, something that I have been multitasking with a lot lately. I've used it in recent Get Ready With Me's. I've used it on my Instagram. It's the Minori Highlighter. This is a small business that I actually had on my podcast. She did not pay me to get in here. I just love this highlighter. I don't know what it is about the formula, but no matter where I apply it or when in the process I apply it, I can do underneath. I can put it on top of the makeup I've already put on, on the eyelid, on the cupid's bow, on the decollete, decolletage. It just sinks into skin and it looks so natural. And I've, I've actually tried a lot of highlighters. I'm not like the biggest highlighter person, but this is a beautiful, natural looking highlighter. Champagne color I also really like because it cools down and tones down any extra rosiness that's going on with my skin so on days when I don't want to have a lot of makeup on my face which is actually a lot of days I will use the concealer in certain places and then I will put this on top primarily here and here just to make sure I even out a little bit of redness it does the trick very easy and if I want I can just like I mentioned put it on the eyelid and it's a quick wash of sheen it's not glittery so if you're freaked out by disco ball situations with highlighters nothing to fear this is just a subtle beautiful product I love it so now we're at 15 favorites on my list what's on your list right now what are you absolutely loving and really reaching for or would you be really sad if it was discontinued because a lot of things are actually getting discontinued I love hearing from you here and it's great to have other perspectives on the channel nothing has fallen off the list yet but I feel like there's a couple of strong contenders that might push others out very shortly. And then I will do a full digital download. I think that's gonna come back by the way because it just was more extensive and I feel like you don't just wanna know my favorites, you kinda wanna know the best by category and possibly the worst might be good to have in there too now that I'm talking about it. Let me know what you think about that. But I hope you enjoyed my little favorites roundup. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to hit that like button if you haven't already. I will see you right back here real soon. Until then, bye.